Hi, welcome to Parametric House. Uh, we have started a new section called Parametric House Shorts, which uh, from now on, on our YouTube channel, uh, we're going to study different example files and uh, explain step by step what's happening. In this video, I want to show you how you can use the Galapagos to produce a series of ideas and record them. So for example, uh, you can see that I have this number slider and when I change this, I can produce different outputs for these random buildings, which you can see here. Uh, also, when I change this number slider, uh, I have the number of the idea and also the width, height, uh, extrusion height, and length of the building. So this video can help you to understand how to use this technique. Okay, uh, let me just turn off everything and explain what's going on. First of all, what we want to do is to produce a rectangle, a series of rectangles. You can simply double click and search for rectangle. And I've used this one, which is create a rectangle on a plane. Uh, because the default input is an XY plane, I have uh, give a point input, so you can use it from the params uh, geometry point and give it to the plane and set multiple points. So when you produce these points, this is going to be the center of the rectangles. Uh, for the X and Y size, I have used a construct domain, which you can find in the math uh, construct domain tool. And this is going to help you to control the size of the rectangle. So if you right click on the domain start or end, and go to expression, you can define uh, how it's going to make the sizes of the rectangle. So for this example file, if you have a rectangle and the plane is like here, uh, what you have to do if you want to define a length for the rectangle, it's going to be minus L divided by two to L divided by two. And you can see that by giving it minus X uh, divided by two and plus X divided by two, you can make the length. Uh, also, you can make another construct domain and give it to the Y size. This is going to be the width of the rectangles. That's really easy. If you want to uh, not give number sliders to the input, you, just, you can go to the params menu. And in the utility, you can find here the gene pool. The gene pool is a great tool. When you put it on the canvas, you can double click and define how, uh, how many number sliders you need and the minimum and the maximum uh, of the uh, number slider list. So this is a great tool if you want to also optimize the final results. So after giving that, you can also right click and randomize the output. So that is going to also help you to produce different results. For this example, I have uh, made these points as fixed points and I don't want to change them. I just want to play uh, with the widths and length of the rectangles. Okay, after we define these points, let's just turn them off. Uh, we can turn them into a surface by connecting a params uh, surface component. And it's going to convert that into a surface. After doing that, we can extrude them by going to the surface freeform. Here we have the extrude tool. Extrude the surface in the Z direction. The direction is going to be the Z. And again, we can give a gene pool to the extrusion. So if I turn this on, you can see that we have produced. Uh, let me just give this a custom preview so you can see that. And you can see that we have made a random extrusion with uh, just simply giving it a Z extrusion like that. Okay, after producing the extrusion, we just have to convert them into one solid. Uh, you can do that by going to the intersection and in the shape you have the solid union. Uh, after making that solid union, uh, what we want to do is to group that. Uh, why did I give a group after the solid union? The reason here is that uh, when we make these buildings, for example, if I move this point a little bit outwards, what's going to happen is that this box is going to not be joined together like this. You can see we have two closed B reps. And because we want to record all the ideas, we want to make these two B reps into one group, right? So you can always use a group tool. You can find it in transform, utility, and here is the group. When you group it, you can see it's going to be converted into one 
index and it says a group with two objects okay that is the technique always remember that you have to group that if you have geometry for the uh, numbers I'm going to explain how you can use another tool to produce a group of data okay after producing the group we are good to go the next thing is that because we want to produce random buildings and we don't have any goals when you put the params menu, you put this Galapagos tool on the canvas. You can see it here. Uh, we have to connect this to a number, the series of the gene pools, which we want to randomly change, right? So you can use the shift key to give it to the length, the width of the rectangles and the extrusion. Uh, also, because we want to make a random goal, you can go to the sets, sequence and random. Okay. Uh, the random tool has a range. I've made a range from 0 to 1000. Just right click on it and set it. This is going to give a random output, okay? Uh, the output we want is just one because we just want not one number. For example, it's like 200 and one, maybe the output. And the seed is the engine. For the engine, you just have to give it a number slider, which is a random uh, number slider. If I connect a panel, to the output, you can see that this seed engine is going to produce random numbers, okay? This is great for producing ideas because we don't have any goal. We just have to simply connect this fitness function to the random output. So that that is the technique. If you want to have a, a group of number sliders, use the gene pool. If you want to uh, have a group of geometry, use the group tool. And if you want a random uh, idea generator, use the random tool and use the Galapagos to change these number sliders. Remember that you have to also give that genome to the number slider. So it's going to change it when we're going to optimize it. Okay. After we have that, what you have to do is to record all the data. Okay. Uh, if you can, if you take a look at here, you can see it's like 188 ID has been recorded. How can we do that? Uh, we can connect that from the params menu and utility. Here is the data recorder. Just simply connect a data recorder to the output and just delete everything. And now you can just run the Galapagos. So what I want to do here is to double click on the Galapagos. Uh, for the Galapagos editor, put this to minimum or maximum. Doesn't really matter because we don't have any goals. But the most important thing, because we want lots of random ideas, is the inbreeding. Okay. If I just hover right here, you can see that it's like inbreeding factor. If it's like 100, uh, minus 100%, it's fully zoophilic. And if it's like plus 100%, it's fully insectus. Uh, if you also right click here, you can see that we have different inputs here. Because we don't want the ideas to be related to each other, because if you do that, it's going to find a number slider, which is maximum or minimum. This is going to inbreed and give you lots of mutation or random outputs. Okay. So you can put that to like minus 100 if you really want random outputs. If I just uh, hit the solver and hit on this one because we want to see all the genomes, which means I want to check that out, I can just hit on start solver and see these results change. You can see that all of these ideas is being recorded by giving that to the output. Okay, let's just stop this and check this out. You can see that we have 145 ideas here. Okay. The next thing about this example file, remember that you can download this from uh, parametrichouse.com is, and I've, I'm going to put a link in the description also if you want to download this. Uh, the most important thing before we go and show the ideas is that how can we record the l length, width, and height of these buildings, okay? Because these are 144 random uh, buildings. Uh, to do that, you have to go to sets, uh, have to go to the math and in the matrix you have to construct a matrix you can see it here let me just bring one of these here and explain what's going on uh, you can give the gene pool to the value input which is going to be recorded and because we want a rows of uh, data what's happening here is that assume that we have one rows okay 
and five columns. You can give an input of one and a five, for example. Why did I give it a five? Because I had five buildings and five points. So if you have like four buildings, remember they have four points and you have to give it four row, okay? So what's happening here is that it's going to uh, make like, okay, this is like nothing, but the number of the length is going to go inside this matrix. So it's like L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5, okay? So this is the way you can make a matrix uh, and record it. Okay, let's just bring it here. You can see that I have made, made a construct ma uh, matrix for the length, the width, and the height, and then I have recorded them, okay? That's it. That's what you want to do. And remember that you have to just delete everything before you run the Galapagos. Okay, after running this, you can see that I have 204 buildings. I have to check out if I have 204 length. That's it. 204 widths and 204 height. Okay, after doing that, this part is the part we want to showcase the ideas. So you can always use this technique to showcase your ideas. The first thing is that if we want to uh, extract these matrices uh, out and get the outputs, you have to go to the math matrix and deconstruct it, right? You can see it, we have, we have one here, for example, okay? And uh, what we want to do is to give the data recorder to the inputs and just right click and uh, internalize that. So I'm going to do that also for the widths and for the height. And as you can see, it go it's going to explain how many rows and columns you have, but the most important thing is that the values, uh, this is what we need. If you right click, and this is without the simplification. You can see it's like 0001, but because we don't need these, uh, and if you want to know more about, you have to watch the flatten and graph uh, tutorial. But for now, I have to right click and simplify the outputs. So now I have a series of, of values. And if I, for example, give a panel to this, you can see that we have this is the first idea. This is the second idea for the length. And then you can see we have all of the 204 ideas here. They are in, they are structured in a group of data, which is the a tree path. Okay. Now that we have this, you have to go to the sets and in the tree, use this, uh, let me find this tree branch. You can see that we have it here. Remember that you have to simplify this and give the output to the tree. And now then you just have to give a simple number slider to the all the path inputs. Because we have one, uh, 204 ideas, I'm going to use a number slider between 0 and 203. That's going to give us 204 number sliders. Okay, so that is going to produce each of these outputs. This is the first idea, the length, the width of the rectangles, and the height. And as I increase that, it's going to show me all of the data. Okay, that number slider is going to help us to extract the data we need. Let's go uh, to the geometry side. When we have the geometry, you just have to go to the PARMS menu, and in the geometry, use this geometry component. And you can see it here. Just give the data recorder to here and right click and internalize this. So now this 204 ideas has gone to this geometry input. Okay, uh, because we want to choose between all of these ideas, uh, in, we're going to go to the sets and use this list item tool, which is going to pick. So if you just change the number slider, you can see that this index is the number of idea we need. So that's the technique. You have to give it to a geometry and then give it to a list item. That's all. But if you want to go forward, you can also uh, ungroup it. You can go to transform utility ungroup. The ungroup is going to help you if you have lots of 
objects outside that and then I'll just give it a edge so I can see the edges that's good for the rendered mode okay the edges uh, I've also connected a custom preview to this if I want to give it a color just give it a color swatch and showcase that okay that's it so now you can see that we have this as a custom preview the last part is to put a tag below that we can simply go to uh, display and use this text tag 3d uh, what I want to do, do here is to give it a location so this location is going to be used as the text the text is going to be the number slider so that is going to be the idea and also the size which is a number slider you can just make it bigger or smaller okay that's it. Uh, you can also go to the justification, put it in the middle center of the point just to make it uh, more customizable. And the color also, if you want to give it a color, we can just connect a swatch to this and give it a black turn off the point. And that's it. Okay, now that we have this, if you want to produce all of the ideas, you can see that we can just uh, change this number slider this is the ideas and you can see that we can change it and produce whatever we want for example if I uh, have this 129 and maybe this idea is good you can just see the width the length and the height of the rectangles uh, if you wanted to record the location of those points maybe they're changing you can also uh, give a data recorder group it and data record it you can do anything so if you have a geometry just group it and data record it if you have uh, information make a matrix based on the data you have remember you can just say one row and the number you have or just say one columns and how many data you have so it's not really important which one is going to be one but one of them has to be one okay and then data recorded and deconstruct the matrix and tree branch to showcase that uh, I hope this uh, short technique we're going to use uh, in the future is going to help you because this is going to uh, show you really fast how grasshopper works and because like the step-by-step -step tutorial is going to take a long time to record this one is a fast way to understand how grasshopper works just let me know in the comments what do you think about this technique is it good uh, uh, from from now on uh, on the youtube channel we're going to have this kind of tutorials or lessons which is going to overview the example file you can download this from uh, the link in the description and if you want to know uh, just learn more or see more of these lessons you can go to phshorts.com it's like parametric house shorts and uh, enroll in our uh, premium content to access that in the private group thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe to our channel and see you next time bye